Hello again with the problem of graph coloring and this time we are going to use a rather better technique that is the CAMP algorithm, CAMP algorithm for graph coloring. This algorithm is computationally more expensive however it is more reliable and is going to give you fewer colors in order to color a graph. It may not always give you the best solution if a problem is too complicated however it performs better as compared to greedy algorithm. In fact, graph coloring is an NP-hard problem and therefore for complex graphs it's not possible to find a solution in reasonable time. But as we said, it takes extra computations and therefore attempts to use as few colors as possible. And as we said earlier, the main trick is in how you order the nodes in which they are going to be colored. So the greedy algorithm wasn't considering any mechanism for ordering the nodes but CAMP algorithm rather does and therefore it is more reliable as compared to greedy algorithm. So if we consider the same problem with nodes A, B, C, D and E and they are all connected like this. So the CAMP algorithm can be said to have two components where the first component is particularly interested in how to order these nodes. In order to do so, we first need to define a value of k where k is the maximum number of colors that we can use. As we said, graph coloring can be used to optimize the problem of resource allocation so it does make sense that we are having a fixed number of resources. So we can use a value for k and see if the problem could be resolved for that particular value. So the first step in ordering the nodes is to remove the node with k-1 edges. So if we see over here for the k value equal to 3 we have two such nodes that is a and e they both have their edges less than k which is 3. So we can remove either of them so let's say we start with a. So we'll remove the node a and we will present it over here as A and we are going to repeat the same mechanism for all the nodes. So now we are left with this graph we have to look for another such node that has got its edges less than K. So we again have two nodes that is B and E so we can remove either of them let's say we remove E and we'll mention it over here that the next node we removed is E. Now this time we have all the three nodes having their number of edges less than 3 so we can pick them in any order. So let's say we write them as B, C and D. So now this reverse order is basically the one that we are going to use and it's going to give us the least number of colors with which we may color this graph. So the coloring part is the same but Kemp algorithm put extra emphasis in order to identify an order of these nodes that would make sure that we color the graph with least number of colors. So again if we reproduce the same graph, now the process of coloring has to start from D. So let's say again we will number our colors we have 1 is black, 2 is red and 3 is blue. So these are the three colors we have got so we'll start with black and we'll start with D. So D is colored as black. Then next we have to color C and for C we cannot use black because they two share a direct edge so we are going to use red for that. Now we have to color B. B again share an edge with both these nodes so we'll have to use the third color which is blue. The next node that we have to color is the node E. So we can use blue color for E also. And we are left with node A. For A we can use black again. So that's how Kemp algorithm has ensured that we resolve this problem with just three colors. So the coloring part is actually the same color each 
node in sequence that we identified in the first part over here that we identified in this first part and then assign a color to each node that is different from its adjacent nodes. So the same rule is being followed. We are coloring the nodes one by one, making sure that no adjacent nodes are colored the same. However, this part has given us a specific ordering of nodes that is always going to make sure that we accommodate all these nodes in k number of colors. Now you might have observed that in some cases we had a choice. For example, over here, we had a choice to start with either A or E. So whenever we had a choice and even we use that choice differently, for example, if we have E, A and then again we have a choice in these B, C, D and for that we use D, C, B instead. So still that is not going to affect this value and we can still color this graph with three colors at maximum. So whenever we had a tie, whichever node we pick, that isn't going to affect this chromatic number. Now let's slightly modify this problem and see if we could still resolve it with k equal to 3. Okay, so uh, let's say we have added this extra edge to this graph. And again, we have kept the value of k equal to 3. So we'll begin and we'll find a node that has its edges less than k. So we have got this node A. We will mention it over here and we'll remove it from the graph. So this is what we are left with. And now we do not have any other node that has its value less than k. So it means that this problem cannot be represented with k number of colors, which in this case is 3. So that is again a clear indication whether a given problem can be represented with any number of colors even before starting to color the problem. So if we reach such a situation, we may pick a node at random and ignore it. Since we have got a tie, so let's say we just pick this node. We will place it over here separately as C. And now we have all the other nodes having their edges less than k, so we can mention them in any order. So we have D and E. And now we can color this subgraph with k number of colors, that is 3. And this one node that is being left aside is basically at times also known as spelling. That we have spelled this node and we are not going to color this. So Either we are going to remove this node or leave it uncolored or we may say that we haven't allocated any resources to this node and we have resolved the problem for the rest of the nodes. Or you may also say that we have acquired an extra color, a fourth color in our case and that is being assigned to this. So whatever the way you assume it, but the problem could not have been resolved with k equal to 3. So either we colored the rest of the graph and left C apart or we can say that we have colored it with k equal to 4 that is using the fourth color for this extra node and that's how Kemp algorithm can be applied for graph coloring. Before we end this lecture let's just apply this algorithm to a rather more complex problem and it seems to have lots of edges and generally it appears that it may not be resolved with three colors but let's just start and see if it can be resolved with keeping the value of k equal to 3 while we use Kemp algorithm. So in this whole graph we'll have to find a node that has got less than k edges. So if you observe we have two just node that is h having two edges and c having two edges. So we can begin with any of these two. So let's say we start with h. So we would assume that if this node and its edges are being removed from here and we will write h over here. Now we will again observe the remaining of the graph and see if we have any node where, where the number of edges are less than k. So again we have two nodes c and g now has 
two edges. So let's say this time we picked C. So we'll remove C and all its edges. So we'll mention C over here. We'll repeat the process. So let's say this time we remove G. We will take its edges off also and the next node is G. Now for the remaining graph, we do not have any node that has got the number of edges less than K. So we'll have to pick a node and put it aside. So let's say we put aside the node J. So we'll mention it separately over here and we will assume that we have removed this node also. So we'll assume all its edges to be removed as well. Again, we'll repeat the process and this time we have both D and K having two edges. So let's say we have removed K first. Now we have D, so we'll remove D. Okay, so then we have F with two edges, so we'll remove F. And the remaining three nodes have edges less than K, so we can put them in any order, let's say E b and m so now this shows that if we want to color this graph having three colors so we'll have to leave this edge uncolored or we'll have to arrange for the fourth color in order to be assigned to this node but the rest of the graph can be colored with k number of nodes if we repeat the process with the value of k equal to 4 now all the nodes can be easily accommodated or colored with four number of colors and if we start coloring we'll have to use these nodes in the reverse order which means that basically we want to color the most busiest nodes first that is the, the nodes having most of the edges and then the other nodes do not make much problem at the later stages of the coloring and that is the main difference between camp algorithm and greedy algorithm therefore greedy algorithm if the busiest nodes are colored first it may end up with a good solution but if that is not the case then it may require higher number of colors but in case of camp algorithm it always makes sure that we start with the nodes that are more busy and have more edges so that as we move on and we are left with fewer colors we have nodes that have fewer edges so that was the problem of graph coloring with camp algorithm thank you